Hi, so today I have a book called The Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows by this author. Co I'm not sure if it's John Cohen or Koenig, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But this book is so pretty, I was drawn immediately to the cover and I really wanted to check it out. So this book, the author defines new words for emotions that we all feel but don't have the language to express. When it says that it's truly original, it is really truly original. Um, I was actually gonna save this book because I'm actually planning to do a video soon of like my 10 favorite nonfiction books, but it's so good that I wanted to kind of do a video um, of it on its own. And then it'll probably be included in that list too, but I'm still working on that list because I'm reading some other no new nonfiction right now. But yeah, okay. So thanks so much for joining me. And this is a table of contents. I always find table of contents interesting. Um, sometimes you can find them if you look at the book you know, preview, but sometimes you can't. So it has like six main sections. Then it has some other things in the sections in the back. And then um, basically he, the author, the author creates his own words based on like emotions. And I'm gonna read just like a few little um, parts and some of my favorite words. And I have the whole book because obviously I, like, I wouldn't wanna give it away, but it does have a little bit of uh, artwork and he credits, of course, the artist, but it's mostly words that he created, which I think is fascinating. And he, I don't know if he calls himself a poet. I don't, I don't, but he, uh, to me, he is a poet, the author. Okay, so, you know, it says, emotions are, so the dictionary evolves over time, of course. New words are coined as needed, emerging one by one from the test lab of our conversations. But that process creates a certain bias, only giving names to concepts that are simple, tangible, communal, and easy to talk about. Emotions are none of these. As a result, there's a huge blind spot in the language of emotion. Vast hues, I mean, sorry, vast holes in the lexicon that we don't even know we're missing. Words will never do us justice, but we have to try anyway. Luckily, the palette of language is infinitely expandable. If we wanted to, we could build a new linguistic framework to fill in the gaps, this time rooted in our common humanity, our shared vulnerability, and our complexity as individuals, a perspective that simply wasn't there when most of our dictionaries were written. This is exactly what this book does. It, it, it lets you read that other people, well, the author, is experiencing the feelings that you're experiencing, that you really haven't found words for. That's why it's so fascinating. A shared vulnerability. So this book is all about like vulnerability and like, yeah, like exactly like emotions and I just love his writing. Okay, so a few of my favorite words that I, um, and there's a little section I'm gonna talk about too. Oh, if you're also noticing these, these are little magnetic bookmarks. I actually got these on Amazon. I really don't recommend them I'll link them in case you like the way they look aesthetically, but I honestly don't recommend them, and this is why. I don't like how the magnet is like glued to this. This is like, it seems like a paper that's kind of has like a waxy surface, but I prefer the ones that are entirely metal, um, magnetic material. My daughter has some, and I just feel like I'm so clumsy that I'm just going to rip this apart. Like, I, I have a feeling that. This is gonna have them glued, and I'm not saying it will, but that's just my fear. That's why, like, I personally wouldn't get these again, but I still, I'm not saying anything bad about them because obviously I just got them, but I don't know. I just, I didn't realize this was gonna be, like, paper. I thought it was gonna be this. I, it's my fault, but I still think they're really cool. Okay, I was using, like, paper before, which was really wasteful. Okay, <sighs> okay, so alongside his definitions of words which i'm going to share those i think i'm gonna leave this section for last he also has longer um sections of the book where he talks about certain words that he um created that are have longer explanations and they're beautiful okay so also a lot of the words that he created he does um talk about references to where he got parts of the word like you know like latin or greek or just different things like in culture. 
or different things like that. So I like how he does that. I'm gonna go back to this, because this was like my favorite thing I read so far um, that I want to bookmark. Okay, so let me talk about a few of my favorite words. So to give you an example, justine. Now, the habit of telling yourself that just one tweak could solve all of your problems. If only you had the right haircut. If only you found the right group of friends. If only you made a little bit more money. If only he noticed you. If only she loved you back. If only you could find the time. If only you were confident, which leaves you feeling perpetually on the cusp of a better life, hanging around the top of the slide, waiting for one more push. And then he talks about um, from just only simple, merely plus jousting a sport won by positioning the tip of your lance at the right spot, just at the right second, pronouncing justine, J jousting. Sorry, see, I'm pronouncing it right. It's like, okay, justine, just jousting. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I think that's so interesting because I'm always definitely comparing myself to other people and wondering if I had this, like, my life will be so much better and then I'll get something and then my life is pretty much the same. I mean, obviously, I do find things to distract myself in a good way, which make my life more meaningful. But I thought this word was really interesting that he made. And then, um, harmonia. Har okay. Har, and he tells you how to pronounce it. Harmonia. Harmonia. <laughs> An itchy sense of dread when life feels just a hint too peaceful. When everyone seems to get along suspiciously well with an eerie stillness that makes you want to brace for the in inevitable collapse or burn it down yourself. I have this all the time. As someone who has anxiety, sometimes when things are going too well for me, I f like my, my brain looks for problems. <laughs> um, and I always feel that way. Like it's like very short lived for me when I have these moments of like pure joy, which I guess that's just part of being a human, but I love that. And then the guilt rights, an imaginary committee of elders that keeps a running log of all your mistakes, steadily building their case that you're secretly a fraud, a coward, a doofus, a douche, who would have revoked your good fortune years ago had they not been hampered by their own bitter squabblings over proper grammar and spelling. Yeah, I think I read the wrong one. Um, I think I wanted to tell y'all yeah, I read the wrong one. That's okay. Like, because I was like, yeah, that wasn't the one I bookmarked, but now y'all got an extra word. <laughs> okay, the one I wanted to bookmark was this one. The whip laugh, the whip graph delusion, the phenomenon in which you catch your reflection in the mirror and get the sense that you're peering into the eyes of a stranger, as if you're looking at a police sketch of your own face aged forward 20 years, which would imply that the real you is out there somewhere, wandering the streets of your old neighborhood still at large. Wow, he just has a way with words. And I don't think there's a word in here I don't like. Um, and then he talks about the reference um, in horticulture, whip grafting is when you fuse the top of one plant to the bottom of another. In psychology, the capgris dilution is the conviction that a loved one has been replaced by an identical looking imposter. So I just love this book. Like it's like art. I am so happy that he wrote it and I found it. Um, oh, okay, that was four or yeah. And then now the last one. So I'm not gonna read any more because I'm gonna leave that as a surprise. But I do wanna go over this real quick. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm just gonna read a sm small part of it. Um, and I, this artwork is beautiful. So this word is called Osery. Feeling torn between the life you want and the life you have. Okay. Consider Dorothy, the orphan girl of Kansas sitting, Kansas, sitting up in her bed at the end of the movie. While the credits roll and the music swells with the land of Oz still fading from her eyes, she whispers to herself, there's no place like home. Eventually, she knows she'll have to get out of bed, put on a pair of ordinary black slippers, and carry on her life on the farm. When she opens the door, she'll step into a world of black and white into a... And I'm skipping a little bit, so... I don't want to give it all away. Broad sweep of flat land that reaches the edge of the sky in all directions. And she'll know that she's not in Oz anymore. She had a rum springa and chose to return, which means she's now a confirmed Kansian. To her, Oz is more than a dream. It's a sickness, a feverish desire that infected her mind. 
making normal life feel intolerable when she had just been doing fine. But where does she go from here? How long will it be before she's gazing over the rainbow once again? I, the, so this whole um, section is about Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. And it's almost like he read my mind because I was literally thinking about this recently about, you know, Dorothy being in Oz, about how when I watch The Wizard of Oz, which is one of my favorite books slash movies, I feel a slight bit of depression. Also, the witch freaks me out, but more than the witch, it's actually the lady before she turns into the witch, that mean neighbor, because she just seems so real, and I've known people like that, that, like, yell at kids, you know, because they say they're, like, stomping on their grass or something, you know, and so... Um, being a dog lover, it really breaks me when she takes Toto. And so, anyway, he picked up on that and how other people might think that's common sense, but I guess I never really thought about the actual meaning behind the Wizard of Oz. Like, I didn't get it when I was a kid, but it's someone who's wanting a life, Dorothy, that she doesn't have or dreaming about a life that she doesn't have. But then in the end, she finds out, you know, like all these people were actually near her like the people she yearned for in the dream you know like the tin man the scarecrow um they were all like her uncle i don't know if it's her uncles or the farm workers whatever they were i forgot <laughs> but um they she knew them and like you know she you don't really know how she feels after she gets back to kansas and i mean i think that's the genius i didn't read all of the books maybe they go into it in the books but i just you know read the first one but um, maybe I should read those, but I, and I think I will. But the point is, I get a little bit depressed always at the end of the movie and the book. And I think, and I haven't read the book in many, many years, so maybe there's something in there I forgot. But um, I think that he really grasped that part about the movie and about like the longing we feel for other things. And um, you know, sometimes I think of even the song "Somewhere Over the Rainbow." Like, what is over the rainbow for you? What is over the rainbow for Dorothy? Um, sometimes I wish she could be back in Oz, even though it was just a dream, you know, because, you know, but it's like, it's kind of like a mental thing too, you know, like that whole cliche, like the grass is greener on the other side, is the grass greener on the other side, whatever that is. Um, like usually it's not, um, you know, the same thing about me referencing that word he used about me wanting something else or desiring more things or more somethings or different people to put you so this book makes me reflect on my own life it has so many things that like you want to reference like movies and music and stuff that you that to me i already was thinking of with some of the words and so i highly highly recommend this book it's beautiful um i love it love everything about it I actually, yes, wanted to share it, and I hope that um, you enjoyed this video, and I hope that if you think the book sounds interesting that you'll enjoy it as well. Thanks so much for subscribing, liking my videos. I really, really appreciate it, and for watching. Bye.